Welcome to my Atari 7800 basic tutorial. So get your Atari mug and fill it with your favorite beverage. Put on your spectacles if you got them and let's make a thing. This is the first in a series of videos showing my own techniques using Atari 7800 BASIC. I do not claim that these are the best or only ways to do things, but they are the methods I have developed over the past few years programming, but not necessarily releasing Atari 7800 games. The code in these videos is designed to be simple to read, and most of it will be unoptimized. Feel free to download the code from GitHub and optimize it to your liking. Step 1. Visual Studio Code The Atari 7800. For me, it's the most underutilized console and the one that holds the most promise as to what can be done with the 6502 based Atari machine. The 7800 is backwardsly compatible with the 2600 but sports the Maria chip designed at the time in about 1983 to move graphics around the screen like no other machine, but especially better than the ColecoVision, Atari's main competition when it was designed. We'll talk more about the history of Atari and the 7800 as this series continues, but for now, let's get started by jumping in and creating Atari 7800 Hello World. The first step is to download Visual Studio Code. You can find it for PC, Mac, or Linux at code.visualstudio.com. Once you've downloaded, you can click the plugin extension button on the left side of the IDE and you will see a searchable list of all the extensions available. There are many. Search for Atari Dev Studio. Atari Dev Studio combines Atari 7800 Basic, created by Fred Quimby with help from Bruce Tomlin, and now maintained by Mike Sarna. With the plugin, you can easily compile BAtari basic code, Atari 7800 basic code, and DASM assembly language code. It also features a sprite editor and the A7800 emulator for easy testing. Look over the preview pane and see the information for Atari Dev Studio. Notice it was created by Chunky Pixel. We are all indebted to Chunky Pixel for creating such a fine piece of software. Now click the install button. Next, create a new file and save it on your hard drive. I will call mine demo1.78b. The .78b extension will make sure Visual Studio Code associates the file with the 7800 compiler and provides the codings included in the Atari Dev Studio plugin. Now we are ready to go. Boilerplate. First, we'll drop in some boilerplate code. I'm not going to explain every detail or every option we're using, but just enough so you can dive in later and explore all the incredible options available in Atari 7800 Basic. Here's the code. Set zone height 16, set display mode to 160A, plot value on screen to on, set ROM size to 32K. The first line, set zone height 16, is how we set the horizontal band zones for sprites. Each horizontal band can have a set number of sprites, usually 16 to 20, depending on how many CPU cycles it takes to draw the entire screen. You can set this to either eight or 16. Eight allows for more bands, but with fewer sprites in each band, while 16 has less bands, but more sprites in each band. You'll need to experiment though with these options and many others to optimize your Atari 7800 game. The next line sets the graphics mode to 160A. 160A is the most basic mode. It is a 160 by 192 mode, which means the pixels are like tall rectangles. Each sprite in this mode can be three colors plus a transparent color. There are other modes too. 160B allows for 12 color sprites, well actually 12 plus transparent, while multiple 320 modes allow for high res screens that rely on color artifacting for multicolored sprite displays. If you watched our previous video on Atari 700 sprites, you can see some of these modes in action. There will be a link in the notes. My favorite mode right now is 160A mixed with some 160B sprites, as we'll see later in these lessons. 
The next line, set plot bios on screen, is used for debugging, and we'll talk about that later. Set ROM size to 32K. This is the size of the cartridge. 32K is small, but we don't need anything else yet. There are many cartridge sizes, including ones that contain extra RAM to hold data and expand the number of sprites that can be displayed on the screen. The Atari 700 Basic Guide was created by Mike Rev in Sarna. It will give you detailed information about all the valid options for this command, as well as invaluable information about Atari 700 Basic. I usually keep it open in a window while I'm working. The guide is updated often. There are many more commands and options listed in 2023 than there were in 2019 when I first started with it. In fact, I'm just now discovering something new. For instance, while writing this, I discovered these palette fading commands I've never seen before. These would have saved me a lot of work on my last project. There's absolutely no way I can cover all of Atari 700 Basic in these tutorials. My job, as I see it, is to show you these demos to get you started. Once you're comfortable, you can devour the Atari 700 Basic Guide and then even tackle assembly language one day, if that's your thing. Anyway, for this game, we'll keep it simple. For now, and just use 32K. With 32K, we will not need to bank switch as the 700 can address all 32K ROM space at once. Don't know about bank switching? It's a way to almost infinitely expand the ROM addressable on the cartridge. The last line, background equals $1.60, sets the background color. Now, let's test this out. Press the little rocket at the bottom of the menu and compile and run the code we just wrote. You must have your cursor in the code window for it to work properly. The output window will show the compilation steps. When it's done, the A700 emulator will automatically launch. When we compile and run this program, it will actually go off into space with this mustard colored background. This is the warning that something has gone wrong. What's gone wrong is we don't have anything displayed on the screen yet. Hit the escape key to close the A700 emulator. If you don't close it, your next compile might not automatically launch in the emulator. To fix this, we add a simple game loop with the underscore game loop label with the go to plus a clear screen and a draw screen and recompile. Clear screen removes everything from the current display and draw screen draws the sprites in the display list. Right now we have no sprites, just a background color. And yes, this is a go-to. Get used to it. To recreate complex logic in Atari 700 Basic, you almost can't avoid using go-to. Sorry. You can create functions, but they also take up precious resources, so I mostly avoid them. Otherwise, you have go to, go sub, for next, and if then for all your branching and logic. Will these limits break your long held religious beliefs about programming? Probably. Will you also get used to it and find yourself thinking about how to solve complex problems with just a few control structures? Also, probably. Underscore game loop is a label, which means it can be jumped to or be the start of a subroutine called by go sub. Our game loop is simply a never-ending loop that is called 60 times a second to refresh the screen. This is done with the last line, go to underscore game loop. All labels in Atari 7800 Basic start in the first column. Most other code must be tabbed in at least one space. Here, when we run it, this happens. Our background color is displayed. <laughs> Next, game loop. All right, next we'll play with the background color settings to create a good old Atari color cycle. The Atari 7800 has a 256 color palette and we will use half of them. You can see the full color palette by opening the sprite editor or look at it in the Atari 7800 basic guide. We're gonna write a quick program that cycles through half the colors. First, we create a couple variables. Dim BG color equals var1 and dim weight equals var2. Atari 7800 Basic has a set of 126 built-in spaces for variables. They are named A to Z and VAR1 through VAR99. You can also set variables to exact memory locations in RAM, but we don't need to do that yet. We will create a BG color variable to hold the color of the background as VAR1. We will create weight, which we will use to wait 10 frames before we change the color. Since the NTSC Atari 7800 runs at 60 Hz or 60 frames a second, that means we will change the color 6 times a second. Next, we initialize those variables. BG color equals zero, weight equals zero. Next, inside the game loop, we'll increment the weight variable, and when it makes it to 10, we'll set it back to zero and increment BG color. Then we test BG color and reset it when it gets to 127. Why? No reason, we could never reset it. Just let the byte that represents BG color increment past 255 and it will become zero. But most of the time we'll be setting limits, so this is good practice. Notice the code for the if statement 
if weight is greater than 10, then weight equals zero. There's a colon, and it says BG color equals BG color plus one. The colon lets you have multiple lines of code statements on the same line. This is essential for an if statement, but also allows you to do multiple things without dropping down to the next line, and this becomes very essential when you're programming in Atari 700 Basic. Now, if we compile and run the program, you'll see the background color change six times a second. Step four, hello world. One final touch for this first demo. It can't be hello world unless it says hello world. However, the Atari 7800 does not have any kind of native text capabilities. So instead we must load in a graphic that represents our text. Atari 7800 Basic, however, provides functionality to turn that graphic into a character set that can be plotted like text on the screen. There's a font graphic provided in the sample programs that come with Atari 7800 Basic. To get it, you need to download the Atari 7800 Basic package, see the link in the notes, or download the code from this lesson from GitHub, also in the notes. Each character in 160A mode is four pixels wide and eight pixels high, with one blank horizontal line at the bottom of the characters. You load in the font with the ink graphic command, ink graphic font.png 160A. Atari 700 Basic 160A mode supports four color PNG files. Next, you use a character set command to set the name of the font graphic minus the extension. So in this case, character set font is really font.png with the .png removed. We could have named this anything. It is font here, which can be confusing, but really it's the name of the graphic file, not any specific function in Atari 700 Basic. Then we use the alpha cares command to tell Atari 700 Basic which ASCII characters are represented in the font graphic. These font characters we will be displaying are just sprites cut from the font graphic and nothing else. This means we need to introduce the color palettes before we can move on. The Atari 7800 contains eight programmable color palettes, each containing four colors, three actual colors plus an alpha transparency channel. In 160A mode, a single palette is assigned when putting a sprite into the display list. In 160B mode, 12 color sprites use either the first four or second four palettes. We will get to that in lesson three. By the way, these palettes are completely redefinable at execution time, which makes them very useful for color-based animations. You define a palette like this. P0C1, P0C2, P0C3. That's palette 0, color 1, palette 0, color 2, palette 0, color 3. 0F is white, and the other two colors are shades of gray. Now, inside our game loop, we can use the plot cares command to put characters on the screen. Plot cares, hello world, 0, 58, 5. There are four parameters for plot cares. The text to display in single quotes, that's hello world. The color palette to use, which is zero, which is the one color palette we just created above. The X position in pixels. The Y position in coarse lines of text. There are 13 lines down the screen. Then there's an optional parameter for number of characters and optional parameter for double wide, which we're not using. So besides text, the plot cares and associated plot map and other commands can be used to plot map graphics on the screen. These are called character graphics, and while they're easy to manipulate, they have restrictions too. Check out the Atari 700 basic guide for more details. Finding the correct X and Y position to get the text into the center of the screen took a few iterations. I think it took me three or four tries before it looked like Hello World was in the center of the screen. When we run this, you should see a color cycling background with the words Hello World displayed in white over it. And there you go. Hello World Atari 7800. In our next lesson, we'll be talking about sprites and how to display them on the screen. But for now, I hope you got something out of Atari 7800 Basic. Hello world. Okay, internet people. As a bonus, I've got my Atari 7800 hooked up to this TV set. I've got my concerto cart right here to see what happens. And there you go. Hello world. We just made a thing. <laughs>